Now, uh, I guess uh, the other revelation there in the presentation of Mahar is uh, it's not just going to take DPWH to do the job. It will have, I will need the support of the stakeholders, particularly the private sector contractors. So let me just say this. Um, we have focused really on good governance and anti-corruption. And again, as everybody realizes, the key to the success of any un good governance and anti-corruption program is the collective effort and the participation of all the stakeholders. And when I say stakeholders, I'm talking not only of DPWH employees and the organization, I'm talking also of uh, the contractors, the politicians, and the general public. They have to participate. Now, let me just share with you how we evolved our good governance and anti-corruption program. When I took over DPWH, I had to get the, I had to engage a professional uh, PR group to do a survey. And uh, because I wanted them to pinpoint exactly what the people expect from the department. So we had a survey, internal and external, and uh, they came up with three key ideas that DPWH should be doing the right projects at the right cost and the right quality. As, as succinct as that, as focused as that. So we have used that as our management philosophy moving forward. And uh, as, as I go through the slides, you will, sh you will see how this has driven our program uh, until, and this will continue to drive our program until 2016. Uh, Pardon for the complex slide here. This is uh, the performance governance system framework that we have adopted. But what's important there is what is on top. We started, as I said, based on surveys and validated that the DPWH should be doing the right projects at the right cost and the right quality. Now, in 2011, the president asked us to add two more things right on time delivery because we were delayed in 2011 and then doing it with the right people. So this governs or this drives our uh, anti-corruption uh, program. Next slide, please. We have four strategic policies and programs. Top of the line, it would be good governance reform and anti-corruption. Of course, we have to do our job, better quality and safer national roads and bridges, strategic convergence program with the other agencies and APPP program to augment the infrastructure needs of our country. Uh, just to respond uh, a little bit to what was shown earlier, I think it would be very easy to go to neutral if we just hold on to contracts and not sign them. But I don't think you'd like that. <laughs> you'd like our infrastructure to go on and in the process, do the corrections along the way. As I said, it would be very easy to go to neutral by not just spending the, the budget that is released to us, but we have to balance uh, efficiency with, uh, with uh, uh, good governance. So let me show you how we have worked our way through. Let's go to the next slide, please. Right projects means that we have to be able to identify how the money that is given to us properly. It used to be that whoever has the loudest voice that would go to Malacanang or to DBM would get the biggest chunk, and they will determine how to spend the money they get. So we've, we've corrected that. We have now a highway development management program that says that, that puts all of our national roads on which ones should get priority. Our program is very clear until 2016. We want to pave our national roads and bridges 2016. First, we will finish in 2014 all of our primary arterial roads and the secondary roads by 2016. And in the process, we want to make all of our national bridges permanent by 2016. So we have more or less laid out the, the roadmap until 2016. 
Now, I also have to make sure that all of our expenditures are aligned to those targets. So we no longer accept uh, requests for multipurpose buildings. Uh, ex so we toss them back to the legislators and tell them, please use your pork barrel. You have your pork barrel. Don't use my budget. Okay? <laughs> so um, the second major component is right cause. Simply said, we are now doing our best to go through open, transparent, and competitive bidding, which has significantly resulted in savings. What we had to do was put in the discipline in the department to make sure that before we spend a single centavo, a program of work, a detailed program of work and a detailed design is first accomplished. It used to be the other way around. As I said, you get the money first, and then you determine how to spend that. Right? So again, this was the major cause for delay in 2011. The discipline was not there. So we had to put in the discipline that any expenditures will require a detailed program of work. Now, corollary to that is I was wondering, how did these projects ever get into a competitive, transparent bidding if there was no program of work to start with? So obviously, obviously, the trans there was never transparency in the biddings in the past without a detailed program of work. You can only have competitive transparent bidding if all the contractors, all the bidders, see the same program and scope of work. They know exactly how much volume of cement that have to be put, how much embankment will have to be there. Without those details, there is no way that you can have competitive, transparent bidding. So that is now a discipline that is in place. The third is on the right quality. It used to be that less than 10% of our projects were inspected by a third party. In other words, whoever requested that project signed the documents approving the contract. He was also the one that bidded it out, approved the contracts, and approved the payment. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, you could imagine what was happening then. Okay. Now we have engaged third party to do the quality inspection. Okay. So we're gradually ramping up so that hopefully at least all big ticket items, meaning 50 million and above, get, up, get inspected before they are fully paid. Okay. Now, aside from that, we also have uh, engage the services or we have partnered with CSOs and, G, uh, and uh, NGOs to help us monitor. As I said, the community, the general public have to get involved. They have to tell us. We have, we have the, uh, the eyes of the general public to determine whether the projects are being done properly. All of our projects that are funded are on our website. So the NGO, civil society, can go to our website and see exactly what projects in their communities are being funded, how much, by whom, when they're supposed to be completed. Okay. Now, uh, in terms of right on time, this was the latest ad addition coming from the president, we have also standardized construction duration. I continue to be amazed when I took over that we had so many dredging projects that said they would be completed in 180 days, but all of them, all that I've seen were fully collected after half that time. Okay. So the original contract period, 180 days, in 60, 90 days, there they're registered as fully completed and they're already fully collected. That's how good these dredging projects are. <laughs> now, so what we've done is standardize the construction period because I go through every advertisement that comes out in the newspaper. I see four or five million pro contracts 
that are going to be done in 180 days. I cannot imagine 5 million being done in 180 days. What are they going to do? What kind of equipment are they going to use to finish a 5 million project for 180 days? So we've even standardized that. So if your co contract cost or project cost is going to be so much, you're supposed to finish that in a standard period. So you better get in the correct contractors with the right equipment, the right personnel, so that you finish them on time. So we've standardized our S-curves, we've standardized our financial uh, projections, because in the past, until late last year, I could still see cash projections ahead of physical accomplishments. I said, I cannot imagine you guys doing this thing to, to the department, that your payments are ahead of physical accomplishments. So these were the corrections that we had to institutionalize. Now, uh, right people, we are professionalizing DPWH as well as its employees. Our management committee uh, members as well as the regional directors have signed into the integrity pledge. Now, I was asking uh, your chairman, Mr. Ramon del Rosario, if I could be helped and to formulate an integrity pledge for private contractors. If you're ready, I'm ready. If they don't sign, they don't get any contracts with DPWH. <laughs> also in the area, in the area of uh, professionalizing the organization, before people can get promoted to an assistant regional Assist, well, backtrack a little bit. A district engineer has authority to sign up to 50 million pesos. Okay? So he can approve a contract more than a governor because he has a lot more budget than probably small uh, provincial government. A regional director can sign contracts up to 150 million. Okay? So they have a lot of authority and they have a lot of resources also. A regional office can have as much as a budget of five to six billion at their disposal. So I have to make sure that they are technically, analytically, and have the management capability to manage those funds. So to make sure that that happens, I had to give qualifying exams before district engineers could be promoted or regional directors. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, <laughs> we have had two sets, two batches. The first batch, we had a few who passed. In the second batch, we had even less. Right? So I said, okay, we'll give you, by the way, this is not just done by DPWH, uh, this is undertaken by the Civil Service Commission. So uh, this is professionally administered test, and it looks like uh, if I don't adjust the test results, in, in other words, I require of them that they at least pass the technical and analytical, because this is to me stock knowledge. You're either an engineer or a nurse. <laughs> so if you don't have technical and analytical, there's nothing much I can do for you. But I can teach you management skills. So those who pass the first two, I'm willing to give them time, run them through to a management course so that they can step up. Because otherwise, I will not have any district engineer or regional <laughs> director to appoint. Right? So, um, w the, the program of the DPWH, I really want to move to at least a moderate in the next rating uh, period. So we're doing our best to make sure that we do the right projects at the right cost, right quality, right on time, and with professional organ professionally run organization. To add to this, and let me end by saying that we are going to run a young engineers cadetship program precisely to bring up new breed of engineers for the department. And we're paying this 
young cadet engineers handsomely. We're paying them at 26000 and more to start up. Now, however, my condition is you are either a top notcher in the board exam or you have graduated with flying colors. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope uh, with that I will end by saying that we're definitely with you in terms of making sure that your Department of Public Works and Highways is behind you in terms of this culture change. Thank you very much. You have question slips at your table. Please give them to your waiter and they'll be brought up to us here. While we're waiting for the questions to come in, can I throw a quick question to Dr. Mangahas on the survey? 